Parallel today, we're going to talk about a different category of quadrilateral. So we are done with the parallelograms, and we're going to talk today about trapezoids. So they're still part of the quadrilateral family, but uh, trapezoids are unique from parallelograms um, in that there are only one pair of parallel sides. So a regular trapezoid has uh, two bases and two legs, and the bases are parallel to each other. So in this parallel, uh, I'm sorry, trapezoid here, the two bases are parallel, and the two legs are not. And I think it's pretty obvious that if these two legs were extended, they'd end up intersecting, which means they're not parallel. Uh, the consecutive angles are still supplementary. So since these two bases are parallel, we still have consecutive angles that add up to 180. And that was also true in a parallelogram. So a special kind of trapezoid that we are going to uh, key in on is a isosceles trapezoid. Um, so it has still two, base, two bases that are parallel. Um, but in this case, the two legs are congruent to each other. Also, the angles are still, uh, the consecutive angles are still supplementary, but the thing that's unique about an isosceles trapezoid is that the angles on each base are congruent. So the top base forms two congruent angles. This bottom base forms two congruent angles. And lastly, uh, the two diagonals are congruent to each other. So if I drew these two diagonals in here, that diagonal and that one, they are the same length. They're congruent. So we'll practice with these properties uh, in class the same way we did sort of with parallelogram properties. Um, but we want to talk about something um, new and that is a mid-segment in a trapezoid. And a mid-segment is kind of what it sounds like. It's a segment that's in the middle of the two bases. So if I, I look at the legs of this trapezoid, and it doesn't have to be an isosceles trapezoid, the points in the middle are the midpoints. If I connect the midpoints, I have what's called a mid-segment. And that mid-segment is also parallel with the bases and we get a relationship that's formed between the length of the mid-segment and the length of the two bases. And that's what we have right here. So if I add the length of the two bases and divide by 2, it'll tell me what the mid-segment length is. So essentially, this mid-segment length is the average or the mean of the two bases. So let's see that in practice. Here I have uh, segment DF is a mid-segment, and I want to find X. X is the length of the mid-segment. So that should be equal to the two base lengths, 18 plus 25, divided by 2. So if I simplify there, I can find that segment DF is 21.5 long. In this example, I know what the mid-segment is. It's 10, and I want to find out how long one of the bases is. So we can still use the same relationship. This time, 10 is on the left because it's the mid-segment length. And I add the two bases, x plus 16, divided by 2. I'm going to have to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. And then I can do a quick one-step equation to find out that the base LG is 4 long. So go ahead and pause here and give this one a shot. So again, I know how long the mid-segment is in, in this one, so that's going to go on the left side of my equation. I'll add the two bases, x plus 6. I have to multiply by 2 on both sides. If 
I end up with 32 equals x plus 6. Continue solving and find that this base ij is 26 long. So we're having a little issue with uh, Google today. So I need you to do the you do in your notes. Um, no need to submit it to this time online. And uh, I'll just check that you have it done in class. So you'll get credit for your you do still um, as long as it's in your notes.